And today we're going to be taking this toy. Check this out. Wow, dollar store toy. Wind him up. Heck yeah. All right, we're going to be transforming this toy into a really incredible specimen for, well, I think it's kind of freaky to feel it like walking in my hands. It feels so real. Uh, we're going to be transforming this beetle into a beetle that we're going to put in our specimens collection. Are you ready? Let's go. First step today is using a 999 black alpha acrylic. We're going to paint all of this artificial green away and I'm even going to coat a little bit of the legs and this part of the, um, the back of the beetle. better already. While painting this down, it is very important for me to note, uh, you probably could ask yourself, why don't you just take it outside and spray paint it black? Texture. Texture is the answer. Uh, I do have a tutorial video on how to make a Superman kryptonite chain, and that question came up, why not just go outside and spray it down black? Because you create texture with the paint and that adds a whole new layer to prop making okay so here we're almost finishing up and be very very careful about doing all the edges of the wings and underneath this so paint this up let it dry check it out make sure you haven't missed any spots because we don't want that artificial metallic green to show through and then we'll move on to the next step so now for the detailing of our beetle today, I'm using a white titanium 901. I'm also using a gold okra number 609. This is kind of a hard color to find. If you cannot find this color, please use a uh, yellow ochre, add a touch of green and a very small touch of black and that would be the equivalent of this. I'll be using two brushes today, a soft fan brush and a medium brush and we're going to be emphasizing the beetles back two pieces here and then also the abdomen. So let's work on the abdomen first. So to create the abdomen I'm using a soft brush today. I'm going into my gold ochre I'm making a soft slurry just enough so it's in between two states. I don't want it completely wet and completely dry either. We're going to be opening this up and we're going to be emphasizing all of this area in here. Just let that color flow into the grooves. Not easy working with the toy. <laughs> Just like that. Soaking it up a little bit with my brush. And let that dry. Okay, with our beetle now, we're going to charge up our fan brush. This is a little bit tricky. Actually, I would probably say it's very difficult. We just want to create a few lines in the back of the beetle's shell. Once there. Do it again. And there we go. Now I got that like that. I could add a few more micro lines up here. Next part, now that that's drying, we're going to do the legs, we're going to do the horns today. I'm using a very small brush and my water. And we're going to do some highlights. I'm just using a, uh, a wash now.
over the beetle. with my damp rag. Remove excess. Creating a faux finish. Doing the details on the legs now, using the white again, we need to go right up here where every one of the joints are made and highlight them. Don't be afraid to let the paint set up for a little bit before you daub it off. Going back into the shell now, all the legs are setting up, adding a bit of white color. This is all about layering. You you just create layers of information. Now, if any time you've put too much paint on there, you want to take something off, it's very easily, you can do it, but texture is key. Now, after the beetle is dry, you can go in there with a soft permanent magic marker now, and you can create more lines on here, you can highlight the legs, you can actually add some lines into the exoskeleton of the beetle. So let's work on the back over here now. Now, once we get all of our beetles line work done to the shell, and I used a permanent magic marker over here, I also used the larger one too. Uh, you can put a lot of detailing in there. Now comes the coating. I am using today a clear hardening fingernail polish. I got this at a dollar store. And we are going to be putting that beautiful shine that every beetle has back on. Please do this in a well ventilated place because fingernail polish has that smell. We're going to put that coat right back on there. Give it a shine. So let me finish the whole entire beetle and I'll show you what he looks like. An important element I should add, do not do the abdomen that's inside of here um, because if you look at these beetles, they have uh, a abdomen that is not shiny, only their, their wings are. So I'm almost finished here putting on the last coat. I, I did the whole entire beetle. Let's let this little guy dry. Look at the difference here. Look at this. It's in the sunlight. It's shiny. I mean, <laughs> the transformation is incredible. Uh, you've only been looking at it under studio lights, but there is a big difference between what this first looked like when it came out of the package and what we have transformed it into. All right, now let's give this guy a home. Working into our next segment of our beetle today. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? I, I just, I love this. Okay. And... Oh, anyways, let's go on. Here we have uh, a box. Now, when, you're, when you have these beetles, you've got to check the size of your bug 
to make sure that that looks appropriate in your specimen box. Today I'll be using a wooden specimen box that I got at a dollar store. You can use any type of box that you like. I'll be using some floral foam to prop up the back. This is black non-reflective plastic you can get at any art supply store and I'm using OHP plastic which is called overhead projector plastic. Finally I have some of this. It's foam tubing that I had cut in half and we'll be putting on a frame. So the first thing to do is paint the box black. The next thing to do is use the foam mounts. The third thing is to use our plastic to put in here the appropriate size. The next thing is to put our insect in here and then finally the glass and our framing. Are you ready? Let's do it. The first part of the box tutorial here now is to paint the box. I'm using an Alpha Black 999. So let's now paint this and see what it looks like. And check out our box today looking awesome. There's nothing more than acrylic paint and water. I had cut five of my foam blocks to the appropriate size. I'm putting four in on the four corners and one in the center for support. I will be uh, hot gluing those down. I had also cut the plastic piece to fit exactly inside there, which our little beetle guy will look totally awesome in there. Moving up, up a little bit though because we're going to put a label down here. And our glass. Let's assemble all this today. Very important uh, detail in prop making and stuff. If you keep the beetle like this, no one is going to see our work. So we are going to slightly open up the wings so that that abdomen piece can show and someone can recognize what is in there. Uh, if we kept it closed like this, um, it's nice, but I'd like to have it just slightly open enough so someone could actually see what work we had done on there. So we're going to be doing that, and we're going to be putting a little dot of hot glue under both wings today to, to fix that, and then we will be building the rest of our box. Now, I'm going to be doing up our label today. I created this label using a program called EarFan and a little bit of photoshopping. And I'm using today a burnt umber number. Magic number is number 624. And that is an excellent aging material for creating labels. Now, if you haven't seen my tutorial on how to create old labels, please look up that on my YouTube site. Once you stain this down appropriately, you can actually stain the edges a little bit more darker once you get that put on there. Let this dry and see what this looks like when it's done. There we go. Okay, once your label is dry, now if you want that label to dry a little bit faster, you're going to put it under a hair dryer. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to be using a glue stick today. The great thing about using glue sticks is that if you put a label on there, you want to move it around, it's very easy to do it. And I'm using my 
long nose tweezers today and putting it where it should be. Okay, and the last part we're putting on our glass today. I got my hot glue gun warming up here. And I also want to show you another product over here. This is a clear transparent glue, and you can actually apply that around the plastic. Now you got to make sure that it is appropriate to use on wood because some of the white glues and some of the clear glues do not stick to wood, actually. So you could always use a hot glue gun to tack it down and then you could also use the glue together but today we're just going to assemble this quite nicely also you can use this type of glue to create frosting on glass by just putting a little daub on the corners and just brushing it in when it dries it creates a distortion in the plastic we are in the home stretch now. What we have is our plastic has been put on there using the hot glue. It took about 15 seconds. We now have to paint up our framing. So let's do that today. And a very important element to add after you get your framing pieces done, you should cut these at 45 degree angles so that they go really nicely around the frame. I've got my hot glue gun warming up so let's now apply them to our bug box now totally completed how awesome is this gothfully yours professor m <laughs>